I had the opportunity to go to, go to his house. He um, was in a wheelchair. He was, I think he was 62 years old. And he was dying of cirrhosis of the liver. He pretty much drank his whole life away. And he was dying. He, he didn't know how long he had to live, but he knew it was just a short time. And so I went to his house, me and another brother in the church, and I had the great opportunity of leading him to the Lord. And you know what? What's, what's really, really great about it, I know the salvation part is the best part. I know that. But what's really great about it is he came to church that next Sunday. And he went back there. The, the pastor went back and, and asked him if he wanted to get baptized. He goes, sure. So he had all of his clothes on. He went up to the baptistry and they, we put a robe on him. And he got dunked into the water. And so that's a blessing, amen. You don't see that very often. And he got, uh, he got saved, he got baptized, and you know what? A week later he died. He died a week later. And then he, they, we, had the, he, we had the funeral at the church, the showing, and you know, 11 people in his family got saved. 11 of them. So you never know, you never know who you're going to talk to. You never know where it's going to go, Amen. But anyway, it's just good to be with, be with you tonight. This brings back old memories, amen. And uh, yes, I did. I did the, I did the song um, uh, service for, for uh, Pastor Tim. I don't know if I did very well at it, but I did the service for him. But I do it at our church here too. And, and um, we just enjoy just serving the Lord every day. And my wife and I, we have been saved for about 100 years now. And uh, so we pretty much... We know what's going on, amen. Um, and then they got this, I got, I got this beard going on, and I don't like beards because they itch. They just drive me nuts. But every man in our church is growing a beard for that, what do you call it, um, no, shave, no shave month or whatever it is. And it's driving me crazy. This is about three days, and I'm already ready to, to shave it off, amen. But uh, if you see that scrubby on me, that's, that's just an old beard I got going on for, for, for our church. Let me ask you something. Did anybody of you get to see the television tonight uh, with DeWine in it? Let me, well, let me just give you just a little bit before I start preaching. Um, he says that if something don't change in a week, if people don't start wearing their mask, and he didn't mention church, praise God, but he said that if people don't start wearing their masks to restaurants and to bars, I don't care, they can shut down all the bars, that's fine with me. But uh, if, they don't, if they don't start wearing their, their masks to weddings, you know, wedding receptions, stuff like that, that he's going he's gonna to mandate that everybody wear a mask every time you walk outside your house, amen, or, or, or if you go to a restaurant. And so uh, he's pretty serious about it. And... Then he also said that in December, there's going to be a vaccine coming. And so how true that is, I don't know. I've, I've heard a lot of preaching on it. I've done a lot of preaching on it. And um, I don't know. I've heard a lot of bad things about vaccines going into you. So I don't know. But I'm just saying this, that uh, he's got all of Ohio in the red. So I just, just want to kind of warn you, you're going to be hearing about that. And in saying that, uh, there's a lot of people today, a lot of Christians today that are hurting. Can you say amen? Lots of Christians that are hurting today. And it's not because of the COVID. It's because of everything else that's going on in their lives. There's a lot of um, um, alcoholism. Um, there's a lot of, lot of things that are going on in people's lives. And so they're really hurting. So I wanted, to, I wanted to preach on that tonight. Amen. Take your Bibles. By the way, if you don't know my wife, that's my wife Diane. And we have been married for 100 years. Amen. But uh, her, yeah, her name is Diane and I'm Jack. And just like John Cougar Mellencamp, we've been hearing that. Jack and Diane. Amen. But uh, 
Uh, and I tell everybody, we actually wrote that song. Amen. So, anyway, take your Bibles. And um, I do want to pray for, um, for bro Brother Tim. Amen. And he called me. He sounded awful weak. And they, he actually did say they took his uh, oxygen off of him. And, um, but he, he just didn't sound good. So y'all need, we all need to pray for him, amen. And normally he just calls me and says, hi, Brother Fox, how you doing? He usually calls me once a month. See, we just see how we, each other's doing. But he called me, and this was different this time. He says, uh, Brother Fox, can you, can, you, uh, can you go to the church and preach Wednesday night? And, of course, you don't even have to ask me that. I'm ready, amen. And, uh, but you, you guys continue to pray for your pastor, amen. He needs it. And he just sounded awful weak. And um, I love him. I've been around him for a long time. And so uh, he's, a good, he's a good man. So you pray for Pastor Tim. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. And I'm going to ask you tonight to go ahead and stand to your feet for the reading of God's Word. That will be Psalm 73. And I'm going to start reading in verse 1. You read these verses to yourself as I read them aloud. That's Psalm 73. And look at verse 1. It says, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well, well slipped. Now we're talking about Asaph now, okay? We're talking about Asaph. And I'll, I'll, talk, I'll tell you a little bit about him in a minute. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. He's talking about the wicked, the ungodly, okay? Therefore pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. Okay? Verse 8. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither, and the waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doeth God know? And is there knowledge? Is there knowledge in the most high? That's that's what the ungodly people are saying. Is there any knowledge in God at all? Where is he? That's what they're saying. Verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Tonight I want to preach this message. I named it this. We're going to be at wit's end. At wit's end. I'm going to have you go. I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to have you go to Psalm 107. But I want you to keep your finger here in Psalm 73. And we're going to go to Psalm 107. Father, we do love you. We do praise you. We thank you, God, for being our God and our Savior. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. I pray, God, that you'll just use me just a little bit tonight for your glory and honor and praise. And, Father, I do want to thank you for these ones that come to church tonight. It's a blessing to see the young folks. It's a blessing to see the ones that we haven't seen for a while. So, Father, we thank you for them. I pray that, God, that you'll help them, help them to grow. Lord, we pray as we walk out of this church tonight that maybe we'll know a little bit more before we came in. So, Father, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now I want you to look at um, uh, Psalm 107, if you would. Psalm 107. And, yeah, you may be seated. Go ahead and sit down. I want you to look at Psalm 107 and look at verse 23, if you would. Psalm 107 and look at verse, uh, look at verse 23. The Bible says, They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raises the stormy wind, which lifteth up the ways thereof. 
they mount up to the they mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men and are at what? Their wits end. They're at their wits end. Amen. You know, I'm a land lover. Amen. I don't know about some of you may be uh, sea lovers, but uh, whenever us land lovers think of the sea, we think of that we think of nice, clue, clear blue water, don't we? Amen. You ever look on television and you see and you see all oh boy all that nice blue water, amen. And then we think of the sun rising above that water, and boy how beautiful that is. And we think of the tranquil the tranquility of the calmness of the sea. You ever see that on television? They make it look so good, don't they? Amen. And folks, um, and uh, swimming, and people swimming, and you see all these uh, uh, nuts that are laying on the beach getting, getting burned up, amen? And so we see that in, in Psalm 107 talks about the people who make their living in the sea. That's what this is talking about. They're from, they, they make their living from the sea, from the ships that they work day and night. Have you ever watched that, that show, the most dangerous jobs. Have you ever seen that show, The Most Dangerous Jobs? Where, where, where these fishermen are in northern Alaska and they're netting for crabs in the frozen weather. The sea was raging. They reel to and fro and stagger. And it gets to a point where they get to their what? To, to their wit's end. Amen. So if you've ever seen that, that show, here's what they do. They're, they're, uh, uh, they're out there in the seas. They're going there. They're, 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 these fishermen are looking down at the water. And then they're looking up at the sky. And then they're looking down. How many of you have ever been out on, on, the, on, the, on the water uh, fishing? Oh, you got to get out there. Amen. And then you're looking down at the water. And then you're looking up at the sky. Amen. And then all of a sudden they're going, they're going like this. And they, they look like they're all drunk. Amen. They're all dr they look like they're drunken men. And they're staggering all over the place like this. And, and the Bible says that to, they get to the point where they're at their wits end. You know what that means? They're almost thinking that they're going to die. They're going to die. They're bobbing up and down. They know they're at the. They're, they know they're at death's door, and verse 26 and 27 very clearly says they mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men, and are at their wits' end. They're at their wits' end. Let me ask you this tonight, if I can have your attention, please. Have you ever been to the point in your life that you have ever been at your wit's end? Have you ever been really to your wit's end? Think about that a minute. There's a lot of Christians out there today. There's a lot of lost people out there today. I want to tell you the truth. They're at their wit's end tonight. Amen. They don't know which way to turn. They're staggering to and fro. And they're at their wit's end. Maybe you've had trouble upon trouble and you, and, you go to, and you get to a point of just throwing up your hands and quit. Have you ever been there and done that? Amen. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of Christians tonight that they're just, they're, 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 they're tired and they're sick and tired. And they're tired of, of, of fighting Satan all the time. So what they do is they just throw up their hands and they quit the church. Amen. They're tired. They're tired of fighting Satan. So what do they do? They give in to him. Because they get to their wit's end. They get to a point of just throwing up their hands and saying, oh, I quit. I quit. This man that I led to the Lord, this man that was only 62 years old, he, the doctors told him that he was going to die. He had, he had a, a oxygen on his nose and, and he was going to die. And, and, all, and all the time that I was talking to him, uh, uh, sitting on his bed talking to him, all he did was just cry and the tears would run down his face. And he said, I'm at my wit's end. I'm at my wit's end. 
And he'd sit there and he would shake. And he would shake. I tell you, in 2002, that's the way I was. In 2002, I had uh, contacted, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, Diane? A kidney infection. And it went into my bloodstream. There's a word for it. Septic. It went septic into my bloodstream. And I, I sat in the, in the emergency room and, and I was shaking so bad and, and, and I went in there and, they, and I had to go to the bathroom and I went in and I hugged the toilet and I was just sick and, and, and the nurses and my wife got the nurses and they come in and got me and they rushed me into the emergency room and, and, and my wife said that I was just about the color of this shirt right before you pass away. I mean this, this coat. You get that gray ash look. And I was shaking so bad and, and nothing could help me, Amen. I was in intensive care for about four days. And they were pumping IVs into both arms. And I couldn't stop shaking. They were pumping that into my arms. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. I was at my wit's end. And then something spectacular happened. I said, Lord God, you know me. Lord if, if you want me to do something for you even greater than what I'm doing now, take this from me, Lord. Take this, 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 this stuff that I have in, inside of me. Take it from me. And I was shaking like that. And I was praying, oh, Lord God, it's either that or just take me home. I'm ready. My wife, she was at home. She was on her way in. And I was shaking and I knew I was just about ready to take that last breath. And then all of a sudden, Jesus Christ showed up. Amen. Jesus Christ showed up. And I said, Lord, help me. And you know what he did? He calmed me down just like that. And just in about a, a minute of time, my blood pressure went down. In just about a minute of time, my fever broke and my bed was just soaked full. And then here comes the nurse with a pill. I said, I don't need that. I got Jesus. Amen. I don't need the pill. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. That was in 2002. And that's something that you'll never forget. How Jesus Christ, when he, when he touches somebody, he touches them. Amen. But I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I was at my wit's end until I seriously got in touch with Jesus. Seriously ask Him, Lord, help me. We see that Asaph, go back to, go back to Psalm 73, if you will. And look at, look at verse 2 again. It says this, it says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no, pain, no, no bands in their, in their death, but their strength is firm. And then the Bible says, they are not in trouble like other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain, violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than the heart could wish. We see that Asaph, if you know anything about this man, Asaph, Asaph struggled to be a Christian. He struggled to be a Christian. Asaph was at his wit's end. Amen. Let me just tell you a little bit about Asaph. Asaph was saved. He was a Christian. But Asaph was very, very poor. He worked in the temple, brothers, sisters. He worked in the temple. He would read scripture in the temple. Amen. He would lead the music for David. He would go to the door, and, and, and as the door would open, he'd say, Hi, come on in. Come on in. It's good to see you. Hi, come on in. But Asaph 
saw the wickedness that were coming into the temple. He saw them have all the nice clothes. He saw all the rings on their fingers. He saw all of the, all of the money that they had that they were going to uh, put their little bit into the offering plate. He saw all of that, and he got tired of being a Christian. He got tired of suffering. He got tired of not having no money. He got tired of not having no clothes. Amen. He got tired. Poor Asaph was tired. And look at verse 2. But as for me, this is what Asaph was saying, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well slipped, well nigh slipped. You see, listen to me, Asaph was at his wit's end. You think Christians can get at their wit's end? Absolutely. There's a lot of them out there today, they're at their wit's end. There's a lot of churches that are, that are empty. Look around you. They're at their wit's end. They're at their wit's end. They think there's something better in the world than Jesus Christ. But let me tell you something, folks. There's nothing better than Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ can be an uplifter. Only Jesus Christ can take you out of the mire and put you into the choir. Amen? But we see that Asaph, he got tired of watching the ungodly coming in when he had absolutely nothing to live for. Many of God's saints, I just said, have been in this same boat. And you say, Brother Fox, why does a Christian have to go through such rough times and the wicked prosper? Have you ever asked somebody that? Why, why does a Christian have to go through such times when you see the, 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 the wicked and the ungodly and the unsaved, they just keep prospering, don't they? It's very simple. Keep your finger here and turn to 1 Peter. Hold your finger here and turn to 1 Peter. Bible says... In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And we see God puts us through some tests, don't he? He puts us through some tests. Listen, you young folks that are here today, the more you grow in the Lord, the more that God is going to put you through some tests. Hello. He's going to put you through some tests. We see that God puts us through tests to see how our faith in Him is. How strength, how strong is our strength in Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. I've seen a lot of tests. I've been a pastor for over 30 years. I've seen people come into the church that's been hurting. I've seen death. I've done funerals. I've done so much, and I've seen so much. I've seen people hurting and people dying. I've buried people over and over. Listen, folks, things are going to happen in our lives. Amen? Things that I don't even want to even tell you because... Some of them are not very nice. But listen to me. Asaph said, look back again, if you would. Look back again in 73. Asaph said in, in, uh, in verse, 14, verse, four, verse 14 that he was plagued and chastened every day, didn't he? Look at it. It said, for all day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. Every morning, this man, Asaph, was plagued and chastened. But we see that he, that he wanted more than to just being a Christian. 
That's what Asaph wanted. It, being a Christian was not was enough for him because he got tired. He got wore out. But folks, I want to say this and listen to me close. Listen to me. Satan tells us that all the time, doesn't he? He tells us that all the time. There's more to life than serving Jesus Christ. There's more to the world than, than serving Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you the truth tonight. There's nothing more precious than our Lord and Savior. Amen? Where would we be if we didn't accept Christ as our Savior? Where would we be tonight? Would we be behind some bottle somewhere in our bedroom? Would we be in some bar tonight drunk? Would we be in some ditch tonight with a needle in our arm? Or would we be in some coffin tonight on our way to hell? Amen? Where would we be without Jesus? I'm so thankful and I'm so glad that all those years ago that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm just as much saved today that I, that I, than, I am, than I was back then. You know why? Because nothing can take that my, me out of the Lord's hands. And I get tired of churches preaching. I get tired of it. The churches are preaching that you can lose your salvation. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you don't have to lose your salvation? Amen? Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ has us in His hand and nothing can pluck us out of that hand? Amen? Aren't you glad of that? Boy, when I take that last breath, glory to God, I know where I'm going. You see that? That's rapture practice. Amen? That's rapture practice. And one of these days when I'm doing that rapture practice, I'm going up. And I ain't coming back down, amen. That's rapture practice. So I give you all something to do later. You can practice. Asaph got tired. Churches are tired. People that are going to church are tired. They're tired. They're giving up. And they just want to just move Jesus Christ off to the side. And listen, folks, that's exactly what Asaph was doing. He just took his hand and said, I don't need you anymore, God. There's something better that I need. I need to have those rings on my fingers. I need to have those nice clothes on my backs. I need to have that nice roof over my head. I need this, Asaph. I can just, I can just hear him saying it now. Even though the Bible does not say that. But I believe that Asaph was at, was at his wit's end. But look what happened uh, Asaph, when, when he heard the preaching of God's word, this is my favorite part. Look at, look at verses 17, 18, and 19. Look what happened when Asaph went in and heard the preaching of God's word. Listen to it. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Listen, folks, that's where you're at tonight. You're in the sanctuary. Amen. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understand I their end. He understood. Surely thou dost set them in slippery places. Thou uh, castest them down into destruction. That's hell. How are they brought into desolation as, a, as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. The people in hell, in hell tonight... They're consumed in terror. They're consumed in darkness. They're consumed in gnashing of teeth. You know why they gnash on each other? Does anybody know that reason? Does anybody have an idea why people gnash on themselves in hell? Well, let me give you just what I think it is. You know, inside of us we have blood, right? In hell you don't. But they gnash on each other trying to get a little, drop of, a little drop of blood, a little drop of water, 
just a little bit of something, just a little bit of something to cool their tongue. Now, I can't prove that by the Bible, but they do. They gnash on each other with their teeth. Amen. That's sad, isn't it? That's sad. That's the gospel of Jack Fox there. That's just a little tidbit that I'm throwing out to you. I don't know for sure. But that's how I feel. That the, the searing heat is so intense in hell that they have to gnash on each other. How bad is that? Let me ask you something tonight. How many of you here are saved? Say amen. Hold your hand up. You, you've accepted Christ as your Savior. Say amen. Aren't you glad that you don't have to go to hell? Aren't you glad that you don't have to worry about that at all? Amen. Glory to God. You got me stirred up now. I'm ready. I'm warmed up. Praise God. We don't have to worry about that because we're on our way to glory when we take that last breath. Asaph went into the auditorium. He went into the sanctuary and he heard the preaching of God's word. He heard the preaching and then it came to me, how foolish am I? All these people with everything are going are to bust hell wide open. He says, I'm saved. I'm going to be going to glory. Listen to what it says. Asaph found out he was blessed, that he has something to look forward to, heaven. And the rich and the ungodly have, have nothing but desolation and terror and hell. But you know what? He had to hear the preaching of God's word. Aren't you glad you're in church tonight? You ought to be. You're listening to the God's word tonight. Folks, after we get through God's test and we look back on how we handled it, how we handled it many times, uh, we say the same thing as Asaph did in verse 22. Look at it. Asaph said, So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. What was Asaph saying? Thank goodness I heard the preaching of God's word. Now I know where I stand. I don't need the finest clothes. I don't need the finest of houses. How many of you here are rich? Take me home with you. I don't need the finest of houses. I don't need the finest of clothes. I don't need all that jewelry and all that stuff. All that stuff is fine. But never put it before Jesus Christ. Amen? Never put it before Christ. Always put Christ first in everything that you do. The order, the order of service as a Christian, number one, who do we put first? Jesus Christ, God. Number two, you put your family second. Hello. And number three, you put your church third. Amen. And you put those all together, and praise God, you got something going for you. Amen. But Asaph, Asaph said, he, he said, so foolish was I. He said, I, I, I'm ignorant. Well, we see that Asaph wasn't really at his wit's end anyway, was he? He really wasn't. He just, he just saw the prosperous of the rich. He saw the prosperous of those coming into the temple, into the, into the temple and all, their, all of their, uh, their stuff and their money. By the way, just because they had money doesn't mean that they did much with their money. You know, uh, put, probably put a dollar in the offering plate. How many people do we know do that? Amen. And he said, 
Boy, am I foolish. I got everything. I got all of heaven. I have everything. And you know what? Asaph's outlook on life was great because he knew that he doesn't need all that stuff. You know, I got a brand new truck out there. My wife bought that for me. Amen. Yeah, she bought it. She woke up one morning, brother. She woke up one, I woke up one morning. I was sitting in my chair drinking a cup of coffee. And she says, Jack. She calls me Jack. She says, Jack, would you, would, let's, go get a, let's go get a truck. Is that my wife? Yeah. I said, I'll be dressed in five minutes. So we went and we bought that truck. Boy, that's a pretty thing. Everywhere I go, people look at it and say, boy, that thing's pretty. And, and I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, really, I really like that truck. Man, I got them big old shiny wheels on it. Amen. I got those running boards on the side. I got that, that thing on the back, you know, that cover. I, got, I, I mean, I got, I got everything inside of it. I even have my wife inside of it sometimes. And so uh, that truck is nice. But you know what? It's just a truck. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't replace God. Amen. It's just a truck. And by the way, do you know where that truck came from? God. See, he loves us so much that he, that he wants to give us good gifts. He loves us that much that he's willing to, uh, to give us things that, that, that we desire. Amen. Anyway, I got rid of that 2012 Impala, and now I'm driving a truck. You know what? God's good. I don't have a, a mansion to live in. I don't have a lot of money. I just don't. I'm just happy that Jesus Christ saved me. And I'm happy that Jesus Christ loves me. And I'm happy that God gave me a family. And I'm happy that God uses me to proclaim his word. Amen. That's the way I'm the happiest, proclaiming his word. Look at verse 26. I'm about done. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. You know, sometimes our flesh and our heart will fail us. It just will. Sometimes we're not going to understand what's going on around us. Sometimes we're not going to understand why we're sick. Sometimes we're not going to understand why, why this is going on in our lives and why that's going on in our lives. And as a pastor, I wondered that many times. Why, why, why? But God said right here that he's our strength. He strengthens us, and he'll get, get us through any problem that we have. Amen? No matter what problem that is, he'll get us through it. Look at verse 28. But it is good for me. That's what Asaph was saying. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Asaph knew he understands to put his trust in the Lord. He learned a lesson, didn't he? He learned a big lesson. He learned his lesson, but it drawed him closer to God. Amen? It drawed him closer to God. Let me just say this, when God puts you through those tests, young people, older people, even, even older, older, He's going to put you through some tests. He's going to test you to see where you stand. Will you fail or will you pass? Will you stand on your feet 
and praise God or will you go running and be at your wit's end? Listen, don't be like those fishermen out in the water, railing back and forth. Don't know if they're ever going to make it back. You know, they're floating, they're looking down, looking up, and they're all over the place. I'm going to say this, and I'm done. Jesus Christ calms the storm. Amen. He calmed the storm. He calms every storm in our life. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we can be in your house. I thank you for these ones that came to church tonight. I pray, God, that, Lord, you know them. I don't know their hearts, but you do. Maybe somebody's here. Maybe everyone here is going through something. And I pray that, Jesus, that you'll strengthen them just like you did to me that day in that, in that hospital room. You strengthen this body. You strengthen my mind and you help me to understand that God, that you are God. And Father, I pray that Lord, that God, that, that you'll help us. There's a lot of people out of church today. There's a lot of folks that has given up. They've gotten to their wits end. They just they're just quitting on you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will move in a special way in all of our families' lives, including mine. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed, I wouldn't be much of a preacher if I didn't ask you this. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed, you say, Brother Fox, I don't even know if I'm saved. I think that I am, but I'm not sure. I hope that I am, but I'm not sure. If you don't, if you th if you're if you're thinking that tonight, and there's nobody looking, I promise you, but me. Would you hold up your hand so I could see it? Anybody at all? Hold your hand up. Preacher, I just don't know if I'm saved or not. Hold up your hand. You say, preacher. I know that I know that I know that I'm on my way to heaven when I die. Would you hold up your hand? God bless you. All across the auditorium, God bless you. Thank you. You put your hands down. You know, at this point here, we would have some kind of an altar call. But tonight, let's just take one moment of silence. Let's just take that one moment. And let's pray for that pastor that's in the hospital. Can we do that? Let's pray for him. Let's pray that God will touch that body and help him. Let's do that tonight. You pray for him right now. Cleans up your heart. Clean up your heart. Clean up your mind. Let nothing stand between you and God, you and Jesus. Clean it up and ask, ask Jesus to touch and to heal and leave it in his will. Let's pray.